Why hast thou forsaken me? The fourth statement that Jesus made on the cross. Journey with me to Calvary. Look at Jesus. It was the day of the Passover. Suspended between heaven and earth. They sheared away everything from him, even to the last rag. Stripped because I am naked, you are naked. And so he stripped just in order to cover our nakedness. Picture yourself at Calvary. And while you're in the midst of the confusion... While you're in the midst of chaos, hear your Jesus cried out in agony, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This statement, brothers and sisters, is loaded with many promises, with hope and encouragement. For the human race. Is this a moment of weakness on the part of Jesus? Is he showing a sign of weakness when he cried, My God, my God, hast thou forsaken me? How can the man who formed this world from nothing say that he feels forsaken? How can the man who spoke this world into existence, let there be light and there was light, feel that he was forsaken? How can this man who stood at the tomb of Lazarus, in whom life is original, life is unbor unborrowed, underived, and said to Lazarus who was dead for four days, come forth Lazarus, and Lazarus emerged from the tomb. How can this man who gave life uh, give you a sense that he felt forsaken when he hung on the cross I've come to tell you this morning that the real meaning of this statement made on the cross is that Jesus had you and me on his mind I've come to tell you today that Jesus was dying for you and for me what does that say about the relationship at the moment when Jesus made that statement? But let me explicate a little from the passage. Jesus is using the cross at this time as a platform for teaching. Jesus is teaching us how to use the scripture. Because you see the scripture for you brothers and sisters, for you members of the church, for those who are planning to get into the church. The scripture for you is the shield. The scripture is the armor. The scripture is the hel helmet. When Jesus cried out, my God, my God. As thou forsaken me. He was quoting Psalm 22. Are you with me? He knows the Old Testament. He knows the scripture. The Psalms begins with the words. My God. My God. Has thou forsaken me? Why did Jesus choose this particular psalm to quote while he was on the cross? Walk with me. Psalm 22 is where David prophesied the death of the Messiah. And so Jesus uses this psalm because it speaks to his situation. I've come to tell you as a child of God, you've got to use the word of God to speak to your situation the word of God will speak to your circumstances if you read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation from cover to cover if you memorize 
portions of the scripture and if you can't find yourself in the scripture then something is wrong then something is wrong with you you have not been reading the scripture because you see when Jesus hung on the cross it reminded him of Psalm 22 it reminded him while he was there sometimes I've come to tell you you need a reminder why we are going to our crucible what are we going to our crucible a reminder we are carrying the cross and once you're carrying the cross there'll be rough days there'll be trying days when the world is caving on you the scripture tells me in Psalm 121 1 to 3 I will lift up my eyes from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord when you are forsaken by your family read the Psalm Psalm 20 verse 10 when mother and father forsake me there's a God in glory he will take me up when you are mistreated and maltreated and fearly at the workplace I'll quote the scripture I'll tell you you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water are you with me church when the devil hurls his starts and is stealing malediction at you I'll quote the scripture we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed David says in Psalm 22 that future generations will hear about the wonders of God they will hear of his righteous acts they will tell of his deeds Jesus reminded he was reminded why he was on the cross you see when you and I sin there was no way out except the Son of God coming to this earth to die for us and I give God the glory I give God the praise that he did not decide to stay back from Calvary but he journeyed to Calvary hoisted on the cross see the Son of Man suspended between heaven and earth oh yes he was dying he was dying for me and for you when he cried hast thou forsaken me I want to tell you the father was still right there he was by his side sometimes when you're going through rough times and you ask where is the father I'll tell you he's right there he's right there with you because the songwriter tells me some through the water some through the fire some through great sorrows but in the night season God will give me a song it'll be a song to cheer me along the way he speaks through the songs he speaks through the hymns when I feel like giving up the song tells me on the way my Savior leads me what have I to ask beside can I doubt his tender mercy who to a life of has been my guide hear me church when I feel down and I feel hopeless the songwriter tells me there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein and sinners plunge beneath that flood lose all their guilt instead thank God he never came down from the cross he stood there and he died for me and for you why did Jesus echo these words? Not because he was incapable of coming down. Not because he was too busy thinking of you. My God, my God, has thou forsaken me? I've come to tell you, it was not a cry of rebellion. It was not a cry of repining. It was not a cry of hopelessness. It was not a cry of revolt. It was a cry of grief. It was a cry of love that was a cry for the hopeless a cry for those who feel rejected a cry for those who are lonely a cry for those in fear this cry is meant to, to heal your suffering because the Bible says for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame my God my God why hast thou forsaken me I'm 
I'm so glad his father never forsook him. I'm so glad that you and I were on his mind. He looked down the passage of time. He saw Jamaica. He saw you. He saw me. And he said, yes, you are my precious treasure. I can't give you up. Whatever it takes, I must come to this dark world. I must die for you so that you can live. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for his everlasting love. I give God the glory. I give God the praise today. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Hast thou forsaken me? Can I tell you brothers and sisters, those of you who are watching this program, the word my is a possessive pronoun. The Oxford Dictionary defines the word as belonging to or associated with. So as the speaker, when you use the word my, you are claiming ownership. When you see the word, you are saying you are associated with something. You are claiming something. In the midst of your suffering, you are claiming something. In the midst of his suffering he was claiming his father he said my God my God showing ownership can I tell you today in the midst of your chaos in the midst of your challenge in the midst of your crucible you know someone you can associate with who is this person this person is the sweet rose of Sharon he's the lily of the valley he's the bright and morning star. You can associate with this man. He's your father. He says, I'll be with you even unto the end of the world. I've come to tell you in the midst of your struggle, claim the name of Jesus. When you are going through rough times, claim the name of Jesus. Like Job shout, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. In the midst of your pain, claim the name of of Jesus in the midst of your trial claim the name of Jesus while you're crossing the river I said claim the name of Jesus while you're going through great sorrows I said claim the name of Jesus while you're going through great sorrows I said claim the name of Jesus Oh, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, tell you a story of someone who claimed the name of Jesus. The story is about David. He was about to confront Goliath. And oh, let me tell you, when David heard the way how Goliath was, uh, was uh, defaming the name of God, he said, why do we allow this uncircumcised Philistine to be defaming the name of God like this? I've got to do something about this man. I've got to tell this this man who is the true and living God I've got to tell this man look here you are messing with the wrong man oh let me tell you when they told Saul about David Saul at this point was at his lowest table where his spirit was concerned and he said okay bring the child in bring the lad in and all oh, brothers and sisters they brought David and oh they placed on David the different military regalia but David said look here yeah, these things are too heavy. I can't manage. You're talking about the man who knows the scripture. The man who says, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. The man says, in the wilderness, he shall place a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You're messing with the wrong man. Oh, David say, take off the armor. Take off the helmet. Take away the shield. I don't need man-made military regalia. But I'm going in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed, blessed, blessed is he who come in the name of the Lord. 
Oh, brothers and sisters. Oh, let me tell you, David picked up his five stones. Oh, yes, signifying, signifying perseverance, signifying, signifying victory, signifying a connection with his God, that his God shall surely deliver. His God shall surely deliver to him. When Goliath saw David, he started to laugh. He said, look at this man. Look at him. Look at this little ladder. So small in statue. Oh, let me tell you, you are approaching this massive giant here. But let me tell you, blessed is he will come in the name of the Lord. And one stone David used, the stone of victory, and landed in the cranium of Goliath. Goliath came stumbling down. I've come to tell you, when you claim the name of Jesus, nothing can harm you. Nothing can trouble you. When you claim the name of Jesus, remember you're standing on solid rock. No wonder why the songwriter says, on Christ, the solid rock, all of the ground is sinking sand. Hallelujah! Mighty rock in a weary land. Cooling shade and a burning sand. Faithful guide for the pilgrim's guide. I said, a shelter! A shelter! A shelter in the time of storm. I want to tell you today, I said, claim the name of Jesus. When the demons of hell come upon you, claim the name of Jesus. Because the demons of hell will have to take their flight. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! What a joy it is to be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I've come to tell you today, Jesus was not forsaken. His father was right there. You will not be left alone in your trying times. When you're going through your crucible, when you're going through your moments, you will not be left alone. When you feel alone, when you feel like you are by yourself, just listen to that small voice. That small voice which says, weeping will endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Listen to that small voice. You are not alone. God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Oh yes, listen to that small voice. When death has robbed you of your loved ones, the mossy old graves where the pilgrims sleep shall be open as wide as before. And the millions that sleep in the mighty deep will live on this earth once more. Claim the name of Jesus when cancer take your loved ones, when diabetes take your loved ones. Claim the name of Jesus because the Bible tells me that Michael the archangel is going to blow the trumpet and the dead in Christ shall rise first. St. Paul says we shall change from mortal to immortality. That's why when you claim the name of Jesus and you are staring death in the eye I will not worry. I'll not be troubled because the songwriter tells me no grave can hold my body down for when the trump of God shall sound. Listen to me. The dead in Christ shall rise. That's why St. Paul says in the twinkling of an eye we shall change in a moment from mortal to immortality. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God for his promise. Yes, church. Better days are coming by and by. When we reach that city in the sky sorrows will be over joy 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 perfect joy will greet us in the morning claim the name of jesus oh gracious god we thank you so much for your everlasting love. We thank you, Lord, for divine providence in our lives. We thank
thank you, Jesus, to know that you are our friend. You stick closer than a brother. And so while we are going through a rough times, we are so happy to know that you are still there with us. And as the songwriter says, some through the waters, some through the fire, some through great sorrows. But in the night season, you will give us a song that will buoy up our spirit to cheer us along the way. We thank you, Lord, to know you have told us in your words, you will never leave us. You will never forsake us. So we claim that promise today. Thank you for that statement. That statement of hope, of joy, of life for your people. Help us to keep pressing on. Is our asking in Jesus' name. Amen.